In this question, we're going to look at the forces experienced by an Olympic snowboarder as he goes down to the lowest point of a half pipe. So we'll draw the half pipe here. Let's say it has radius 5 meters. So it's perfectly semi-circular. And this distance there from the center of that semicircle is equal to 5 meters. And we're going to focus on the snowboarder when, we'll say she, is at the bottom there. But we're going to take into account the fact that it's her and a board. We're going to look at them as separate objects towards the end of the question. So there's the board, and here is the Olympic snowboarder. Let's say she has mass 65 kilograms, and the board has mass 3 kilograms. And the other knowns we'll start off with is that her speed as she passes this point on the half pipe is equal to 12 meters per second. So let's list down the unknowns which we want to find. First of all, let's find the centripetal acceleration of both her and the board towards the center of the half pipe. Also, sorry, same problem with my computer here. Also, just ignore the fact that she has any height. Take both of them as points on the circular rim because the more switched on of you would say, hey, her center of gravity is actually higher than the point down here. Let's ignore that for a second. So just take them both as objects with center of gravity on the ground there. So we want to find the centripetal acceleration. Then we'll find the net force on the snowboarder. Snowboarder. Then we'll find the net force on the board. Then we'll find the force of, I'm going to have to say, we'll just say girl here. Girl on board. This will be an interesting one. The final thing I want to find is the max height, max height reached. If this snowboarder were to travel up and then make a vertical jump from that point there, and we'll say height above, uh, we'll say height above the lip there. So that's the height we want to find in the end. So first of all, centripetal acceleration. I actually haven't included the formula up here, but centripetal acceleration, I'll put it in now, is equal to v squared on r. And if we want to find the force, all we've got to do is multiply, if f equals ma, we multiply this formula by m to get the force formula. So ac is equal to v squared on r, that's 12 squared on 6. That comes to 24 meters per second squared. That is our centripetal acceleration. Sorry, 24. Actually, I need one more unknown I want to find. I want to find the normal force on the board by the half pipe. That'll be an interesting question. Okay, next up, the net force on the snowboarder. If the snowboarder is truly accelerating in that direction at 24 meters per second squared, the net force on that snowboarder is going to equal her mass multiplied by the acceleration. So it's 65 times 24. And that's the same as this formula up here because we already solved that part there and we're just multiplying that part by the m. So 65 times 24 comes to 1,560 newtons. 
Now let's figure out the net force on the board. The board is also traveling or accelerating at 24 meters per second squared towards the center of that circle. So its net force is equal to the mass times the acceleration which is equal to 3 times 24, 72 newtons. Now, the force of the girl on the board. She weighs 65 kilograms. So there's this gravity force acting down on the girl of 650 newtons, that's 65 times 10. G is equal to 10 in physics. The force of the girl on the board has to equal the force of the board on the girl. That's Newton's third law. So we've also got this force, I'll draw it in red, the one we're looking for, of the board on girl, F, B on G. If we find the magnitude of this, we'll also find F, G on B. I've drawn the red force as larger than the blue force, because it is. If the blue force were larger than the red force, we wouldn't be getting that net centripetal acceleration in that direction. It would be in that direction instead. So what we've got to recognize is the net force on the girl here is made up of the sum of these two forces. So net force is equal to the red force, uh, F, B on G, take away the blue force there, 650. And the net force we already figured out was 1,560 newtons in that direction there. So now if we add 650 to both sides, 650 plus, we get 1560 plus 650, that's 2200 FB on G is equal to 2210 Newtons. And that's also equal to the force of the girl on the board. So net force 1560722 Oh. Now the max height reached by this girl and the board. She has a certain amount of kinetic energy down here. And as she moves up, if there's no friction, that kinetic energy becomes gravitational potential energy. Let's work out the kinetic energy down here. EK is equal to a half MV squared. Well, she's got to carry the board up with her in our jump. So we'll include the board in our calculation. That's a half times the combined mass, 68, times V squared, that's 12 squared, 0.5 times 68 times 12 squared comes to 4896 joules. Now when she's up here, at that max height which she's reached, above this point here. So this is the height. We'll say this is capital H, the jump height. She's actually a lot higher from the point she was down here than, that, than just this little h. So we'll call this, we'll call that big H, we'll call this little h here. The higher she goes on that little h line, the more gravitational potential energy she receives. And when she gets to this point here, the max height, her speed is zero. So all her kinetic energy has become gravitational potential energy. So, give myself some working space. UG is equal to kinetic energy. MGH is equal to 4896. 68 times 10 times H is equal to 4896. H is equal to 4896 divided by 680. 4896 divided by 680 comes to 7.2 meters. So little h is equal to 7.2. How much is big h equal to? 
Well, we said the radius of the half pipe is equal to 5. So that height there is equal to 5, and that height there is equal to 5. So 7.2 take away 5 gives us the difference, and that comes to 2.2 meters max height. 2.2 max height above the lip there. Final unknown. The normal force of the ground on the board. So it's up like that. Normal force. This is the normal force which actually supplies all the force to keep the border and the board moving in that circle. But it's being resisted by two other gravity forces. One here of 680, oh sorry, 650, and another of 30 newtons from the board. Let's combine those, so we have 680. Now the net force keeping these two objects moving in a circle is equal to 1560 plus 72. So we have, the net force is 1632. And that force is made up of the normal force on the board, take away the combined gravity forces, so 680. So the normal force is actually equal to 1632 plus 680, which is 2312. Now I'm having a bad physics sense about this last answer here. There may be another way to verify it. Let me, th let me think about this. The force of the board on the girl. The force of the board on the girl. The, f the force of the girl... Force of the girl on the board is equal to 2210. The force of the ground on the board is equal to 2312. The difference between 2312 and 2210 is only 102. I wanted it to be 72. 3 times 24, that's 72. So I actually think that if this answer is correct here, 1560, I feel like this answer is correct. If this answer is correct here, then the force down the board is 2210, and the normal force up is a mystery, but I want the net force up to be 72. I actually think the normal force should be equal to 2210 plus 72, 2282, 2282. So I have a disagreement between my results there. I'll leave it as an exercise to the viewer of this video to figure out where I've gone wrong.